Hi everyone, good day. Uh, thank you to attend this session. My name is Hao Ling, and now I'm working for ARM. Today I'm glad to be here to talk something about Kubi word on ARM with my colleague Bing. So let's begin. This is the agenda for today's speak. Firstly, we will talk something about background about Qubivert, like what Qubivert is, why we need it. Then we will introduce Qubivert architecture, networking, and the CDI component. After that, we will talk all progress for Qubivert on ARM and the things we are going to do on ARM. Finally, we will do a small demo to show you how easily QBvert can be used. So let's go. Some audience may be new for QBvert. Let me talk a little bit about what QBvert is. I list three concepts for QBvert. Basically, it helps you to run virtual machine on Kubernetes. In another word, you can control resource arrangement lifecycle for virtual machine while Kubernetes. Kubivert helps you to connect resources that are necessary for virtual machine. As you can see in the right picture, Kubivert creates three custom resources, KVM, TURN, and VHostNet. Then, QMU can use these custom resources to boot or config virtual machines. Also, it uses Kubernetes components like scheduling, storage, networking, monitoring, and CLI. Thus, you can control and monitor virtual machines via Kubernetes in an easy way. But for virtual machine orchestration, we already get many good solutions like OpenStack. Why we need Qubivert? As you can see here, when a company needs to deploy their service in container, they and use Kubernetes to maintain this workload. Their staff need some knowledge on Kubernetes, like logging metrics, monitoring, and so on. However, in many cases, Company may need to manage both container workload and VM workload. If company hosts another virtual machine work platform like OpenStack to handle the virtual machine workload, the staff need knowledge on both system and the way to more work to do, which means more cost for the company. How about combine Bind these two platforms together. Kubivert comes out, which makes Kubernetes control virtual machine workload possible. Let's have a close look on Kubivert. It is a process of booting virtual machine via Kubilate. The entry is kubectl. User post the VM manifest to cluster. As you can see here, VM is defined in a YAML file. This is similar to configuration file for normal ports in Kubernetes. The YAML file will later be decoded to ports configuration and XML file for virtual machine. Then comes to word controller. <clears throat> From a high-level perspective, virtual controller, virt controller provides all the cluster-wide virtualization functionality. It is responsible for monitoring the virtual machine and the customer resource. And at the same time, it's managing the associated ports. The vote controller is responsible for creating and managing the life cycle of pods associated to virtual machine objects. 
in this case, what controller observed that a port for virtual machine instance got started and update the node name file field in the virtual machine instance object. Now that the node name is set, the responsibility translation to the vote handler for the fuser action. Next is the vote handler. Vote handler is a Kubernetes demo set which is needed to run on every workload host in the cluster. It performs functions similar to those of Kubelet, where it is reactive and watching out for change in the VM object, like boot, purse, or shutdown. Once changes are detected, it will perform all the necessary operation to change a virtual machine to meet the required state. In this case, the vote handler observed that a virtual machine instance got assigned to the host where it is run running on, and then it is using the VM virtual machine instance specification and the single node the creation of corresponding domain using a libvirtd instance in the virtual machine instances ports. Finally, it is virt launcher ports. For every virtual machine object, one virtual launcher port is created. The main purpose of the virt launcher Port is to provide the C groups and namespace with which will be used to host the virtual machine process. And the virtual launcher port contains all necessary pa package for virtual machine boot like libvirt and qmu. In this virtual machine booting process, virtual handler signal virtual launcher to start a VM by passing the VM's uh, customer CRD customer resource object to the vote launcher. Vote launcher then uses a local libvirtd instance within its container to start the virtual machine. From there, vote launcher monitors the VM process. Once the VM process exits, the vote launcher port would terminate. Now we come to Kubivert light working. Kubivert uh, su supports uh, bridge, SLIRP, SRIOV, and uh, mass squared networking type. I take bridge as an e example here. As the virtual machine is warped in container, so here is two level network. First is between container and host. Second, is between virtual machine and the container. First, first layer, CNI creates network between container and host. In this picture, CNI creates network interface CNI0 out of the container and ETH0 in the container and use VETH pair to connect them. In the container, libvirt create a bridge and link ETH0 in the container and ETH0 in the VM. But here is a problem. How virtual machine get IP from Kubernetes? Or in another word, how the assigned IP pass through container layer and received by virtual machine? The answer is DHCP server in the container. The DHCP is modified by virt launcher. It gets the allo allocated IP from Kubernetes. Then 
VM requires DHCP service to get IP. The server passes the IP to VM. Thus, VM can get IP from Kubernetes. So this is basically how Kubernetes light Lightworking works. Next, let's go to Kubernetes CDI. Here, I'm not going to talk too much detail about it, but give you a general idea what it is. Kubernetes CDI is a tool that helps you to build virtual machine image volume. Thus, you can put your own virtual machine where could be right. Generally speaking, it warps a virtual machine image into a persistent volume clan, or in short, PVC. As you can see here, when you put a VM while could be right, VM image PVC is mounted as container disk into ports. The virtual machine file, like uh, Fandora or QCore 2, can be seen in the container. And the liberate can boot from the boot VM from the image. Okay, I have finished the talking on Kubivert basic features. But beyond these features, Kubivert also have many additional features that are essential for virtual machines workloads, like live migration, huge page, device plugins, and sidecar. We may talk about this future next time. Now let's welcome my colleague Bing to talk about some excellent achievements and idea for Kubivert on automatic. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Lu Bin from ARM. Uh, let me introduce some more features that we think are useful for ARM platform. At present, we feel that the edge computing and the automotive domain is very important for ARM in the future. So we are investigating this new domain. In the process, we found that Kubernetes may bring some new changes to this new field. Please look at the right side. This is a typical hypervisor solution for edge computing and uh, automotive domain. There are two typical guest virtual machines in this case, Linux virtual machine and Android virtual machine. And in this case, the hypervisor is Zen. Currently, Kubernetes only support the KVM, as we know. So for this case, I added the Zen support for QWERTY and have successfully to use QWERTY to manage the life cycle of Zen water machines in Kubernetes. Let's see the next slide for more reference. Please see the log as reference. We added the Zen capacity in Kubernetes as the first step. Please see the first picture as reference. In the first picture, it means this specific, specific Kubernetes node support Zen, and we can deploy up to 110 Zen boot machines in this specific Kubernetes node. Then we optimize the report ports. So finally, as you see in the second picture, we can successfully deploy Zen water machines by Kubernetes on ARM platform. Also, if we kill the Zen water machine manually, Kubernetes will redeploy it in a short time. So let's see what, what we have done and what's going on. I list uh, several rough stories here. The first one is that currently we can run Kubernetes on ARM platform to achieve some basic control of water machines like life cycle man management. This is our first step on, on this project. 
uh, and the patches have been in the upstream. Later, I will show the demo about this case. The second one is that we added the Zen support for Kubeworks, just like the first job. Uh, we have enabled the basic control for Zen water machines by Kubeworks. And the, the last one is that we are trying to enable Kubeworks CI testing on ARM platform, including enabling the Kubernetes pro job on ARM platform. Also, we have some patches in upstream. Okay, let's see our next plan for copy auto on ARM platform. I listed four stories here. The first one is that we need to add device plugin support on ARM. As we know, Kubernetes is become a large ecosystem and the device plugin is an important key feature in this ecosystem, such as we can use device plugins to provide GPU devices into many projects, like such as deploy Android in Kubernetes, such as deploy AutoWell in Kubernetes. This feature is very important for Android in Kubernetes and the automotive domain. So we should enable it, of course. And the second one is that, as we know, sidecar feature is a fundamental feature for service mesh. The service mesh has become more and more popular, especially in some production domain, such as in copy flow, such as in automotive domain. If we enable this feature on ARM, we can deploy copy auto to more scenarios related to service mesh. The third one is live migration. Live migration is a process du during which a running watch machine instance moves to another computer node, while the guest workload continues to run and remain accessible. The concept of live migration is already well known in, in virtualization domain and enables administrators to keep a user workloads running while the servers can be moved for any reason, such as hardware maintenance, such as power management. Kubeworks also support for virtual machine migration with, within Kubernetes. Also, we will do more investigation in new domains, such as automotive, edge computing, and IoT. We believe that Kubeworks will bring new changes into these new domains. Finally, I hope to use a demo to show the water machine life cycle management by, the, by using Kubeworks on ARM platform. Let's share my screen. Hello. Hello, everyone. This is uh, this is an ARM server. You see. Okay. Uh, we have deployed the. Could be what successfully on this specific uh, um, ARM server. Okay, we can see some LibreWater products already deployed in this Kubernetes. Firstly, I will show the CRD in Kubernetes. Kubernetes use, uses the CRD to increase the resource type. Uh, Water machines instance. The short name for it is VMI. 
Good water use the continuous image registry to create watch machines and provide the watch machine lifecycle management. If QV water was successfully deployed, we can see the VMI in CRD. So let's check the CRD. We can see the watch machine instance here. Then let's check the VMI CRD. So it means we have deployed uh, an watch machine success, successfully by Quivot. This uh, new watch machine's name is VMI Fedora, and the status is running. This means that this water machine works well on this specific uh, Kubernetes nodes. And uh, here, this is the IP for this new water machine. OK, let's try to access this water machine. Kubi Water provides a water machine control tool. We can use this tool to access this water machine, like this. It's work. Firstly, let's check the architecture of this uh, watch machine. Yeah, it's uh, an ARM, ARM watch machine. Then let's check the networking in this watch machine. Okay, the IP address is is okay, and then let's use the pin to check the networking. Yes, the networking is fine. So let's quit the water machine. So I think the demo is finished. Thank you.